Thanks, uh, Don, very much for letting me to present uh, the presentations on God's word. And thank you very much, Alan, for your prayer. It really takes inspiration of God and his presence. Uh, we are just mere vessels. So John presentation 21, if you want to put a caption to this presentation, tonight's presentation, you can paraphrase or put a caption like this, lying and stealing under the name of God. He addresses two major sins that are committed, lying and stealing. Sometimes stealing under violence, sometimes stealing by stealth, but nevertheless it is stealing. And when you come to new covenant, it takes so many forms and shapes of this lying and stealing. And worst thing is it is done under the name of God. Perhaps the unbelievers, people who have no knowledge of God might do. And somehow we can say, I understand, but somebody doing it under the name of God is a worst thing. And we see some of the judgments that fall on, on such people. So let's launch and uh, into the Gospel of John. Uh, so far, we covered several topics. Uh, I think we are taking a break um, as per dawn schedule for holidays, spring holidays. We would reconvene after, after several weeks, and then Lisa would pick up with her presentations, and then I would join back with the Gospel of John. So you would have a holiday kind of thing. You can go through past messages if you have missed and uh, if you, even if you have not missed, uh, you can. it's always good to recap because we are doing line by line and word by word and not necessarily sticking to my explanation, but the word of God. And as we go and cruise through book of John or gospel of John, things get very offensive. They're intense and offensive, and they, they get more offensive and more and more offensive. And no wonder Apostle Paul right, wrote, a, wrote a verse for us. There is a thing called offense of cross. If you take away offense from the gospel message, which is inbuilt, then the persecution stops. So every teacher has a choice whether you face rejection and persecution and still, still maintain intact that offense component or you make it smooth and then, then no opposition. So I choose, I think I am choosing, I consciously choose not to soften the word of God and, but preserve the offense for unknown reasons, sometimes known reasons, God has put that component. So if you are offended, just accommodate that offense because that is by design. So topics covered new covenant and everything that follows this are under the umbrella called new covenant in the precious blood of son of God. We have a new temple, new birth, new survival. New worship, worshiping God in spirit and in truth, then only you are true worshiper. New Sabbath, that is eternal Sabbath, uh, which Alan touched this in his prayer, and new water, new bread, new reality, spiritual reality, away from physical, away from flesh and blood, and away from this earth reality. And there are two realities he brings. There is an earth reality and heaven reality. And every Christian is asked and encouraged to come into this new heavenly reality. In fact, you always live in that reality, no matter what. 
for earth reality would cause lots of dangers spiritual dangers it brings in at one point book of revelation plainly states that all those who dwell on earth would receive the mark of the beast so those are dangers of having earthly reality it's not easy it's uh, it's difficult and it's also difficult to understand and grasp what this heavenly reality is <clears throat> and new slavery and jesus christ yeshua plainly declared you shall know the truth and truth shall make you free free from a slavery and new lineage by whose works whose works you do that determine whose children you are if you do works of abraham you are children of abraham there's a new concept he introduces based on your works if you do works of devil then you are children of devil so it's a spiritual lineage and then new blindness it's a spiritual blindness only son of god can turn this off or conversely he can turn on the blindness if he is not happy with you your performance so it's a double edged sword and then last time we talked about new door a door to the father and door to heaven and new shepherd the chief shepherd the ultimate shepherd and hebrews writer calls him that great shepherd so shepherd brings in the sheep shepherd and sheep and then the door also brings in the concept of door and door keeper the one who owns the door has authority to shut the door or open the door and same way the shepherd will necessitate the sheep that would follow shepherd and shepherd knows his sheep and sheep also know their shepherd and they not only know the shepherd they know the voice of the shepherd and they would stray they would run away flee from a stranger and he introduces more characters into this story and each character has its own specific teachings and it brings wealth of instructions every character that he introduces so we will continue to explore john 10 and then tonight plan for today is presentation presentation 21 and john 10 7 to 16 i will briefly touch upon 1 to 6 which we have covered in the previous presentation just to recap and get the context because it's all one thought the whole chapter 10 and <clears throat> etymology this we covered thora is door and thora ros is doorkeeper and poyamen is shepherd and prabaton is sheep and phone is voice and alatrias is stranger he introduces stranger and then he also introduces hireling and he introduces wolf lucas and oida is a is a greek verb basically oida relates to seeing not hearing that seeing is somehow has nuances of Uh, knowing perceiving and aware acquaint and notice it's it's more like perception so it 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 has a wider semantic range and um, it includes perception so king james uh, other bible translations english translations chose to translate this word as no my sheep know my voice voice is an auditory communication is it it voice is something that comes from your mouth but he uses the word see 
Ida, my sheep see my voice. How is it possible? Uh, so translators chose to use the word no. So probably no, but it is much more than no. You have to perception and you are aware of that particular voice and you are acquainted and so acquainted you can recognize a stranger and a strange gospel and you notice him and you know him and you see him, see his voice. All these things were somehow targeted to his voice. The voice is phony as we see here. This phony is the sound that he makes or perhaps the sound also includes the, his example, his demonstration of this righteousness that he is set on. So we'll go to the, our diagram with an, new characters that are added. So here is the father. And by definition, salvation is taking us to the father. So there are two boxes that are presented here in chapter 10. There is one box, which is Yeshua, Jesus Christ. And the second box is everybody else. This everybody else is such a, the way he defines is, I am the true shepherd or good shepherd. He uses various adjectives and he is the door. He, he defines the terms in a very, very exclusive way. He is the door and he is the shepherd and the door to the father is only open to this shepherd and everybody else falls under a different bucket that is here in the, in the dark uh, color. Uh, those who are not on phone, uh, they would be able to see the uh, picture. So this bucket is everybody else other than son of God. So he, he eliminates everybody else by the exclusive definitions. So we call them strangers because he calls them strangers. So we started with Herbert W. Armstrong and Worldwide Church of God. They come, came up and said uh, some do's and don'ts. And uh, we talked about uh, British Israelism last time. Uh, I will come back and touch church government. And they have clean and unclean meat, Sabbath and holy days, tithes, first, second, third, and offerings. And uh, these are the do's and don'ts. And uh, I happen to be in this bucket and uh, like several of, uh, of the people who are attending here probably fall under this bucket, but many others fall into a different bucket. And some might have been part of Baptists and Lutherans and uh, they have do's and don'ts from Martin Luther. And uh, some are Presbyterians and reformed Calvinist churches. So they fall under do's and don'ts of Calvin. And then Methodists, they fall under the teachings of Wesley. And um, these are all buckets. We, we begin our Christian journey and nothing wrong with it. And uh, God let us stay in these buckets for some time. Perhaps it's a, it's a step in progress, but these people, according to gospel of John chapter 10, cannot take you to the father. If they're claiming they're lying, they cannot. And God wants us to come out of these buckets, even though they served a purpose for a time, but now the time of calling has come. And he's calling you and me to come into this bucket left. <clears throat> that is central message of gospel of John chapter 10. And then this bucket comprises of Yeshua, Jesus Christ, the person, teachings, and example. And this is where you have to come and learn the person of Christ and hear his teachings and know his voice and study his example, his demonstration, his acts and his reacts, and how he answers questions and how he deals with people. 
how he shows mercy how he shows justice and judgment and how he refutes false doctrine and false teachers yet the, yet at the same time he shows great mercy and he ultimately gives ultimate example of washing his disciples feet you see everything in perfect balance and completeness of righteousness of his father demonstrated in this one single person who has never lied and he is called the way the truth and life so god the father asks us to come to his son that is his solution all others are dead ends they don't take us to father and he is the only person who takes us to the father and we see the different characters introduced these are called strangers and he is the door door to heaven and door to the presence of father and door to new jerusalem the heavenly jerusalem not the jerusalem in middle east and then he is also the good shepherd the good shepherd and he is shepherd to the sheep and door to the father so he has a double role portrayed by chapter 10 and then some people would would say i love this godly man moses so i would follow teachings of moses and i stay with moses if you are using moses like that as a dead end then he is also truly dead end because moses cannot take you to the father and some others they this is like pick and choose i don't like moses it's all old testament it is all done away i will stick to the latest revelation of god which is paul apostle paul and if you ignore rest of the scriptures and stick to paul and spend re- rest of your life on pauline doctrines then you are here in the dead end both of them you can easily make a dead end out of them that is if you do not come here but these two people like moses was bulk role a leading role in the old testament and paul has a leading role under new testament especially book of acts and many many epistles so they are somewhat similar central figures but but they themselves can't take you to heaven take you to the father they were actually small shepherds under the great shepherd and these two always bring people to the person teachings and example of christ in fact they bring to christ that's what the scripture says but instead of coming to christ if you make them dead end you are stuck with this dead end there is a dark dead end you don't go to the father to your shock and to your surprise scriptures are very clear and then he introduces few other things and god the father is calling you and me from this box whichever box you are you may not be falling under any of these boxes which i mentioned there could be some other box but that might have served a purpose in god's plan for you but now god move is moving on and wants to wants you to move on with him and his son to his son his son is your destination when he the voice came from heaven it thundered to the disciples this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased listen to him or hear him the word here in greek is an imperative that is command from the father so he is directing us to his son some people might argue you are ignoring father and you are diminishing father by following christ it is a false idea it's a false proposition you are actually honoring father by obeying the father because father said this is my beloved son hear him you have to listen to the son then you are honoring and obeying the father because he is the beginner and finisher of your faith 
he is the starting and ending and your faith begins with him and ends or completes with him you have to build your theology from scratch here through these three things and and he knows his sheep and leads them he goes front and sheep would follow him he gives us example and we have to follow his example and take his lead and he introduces distract distractions and fakes first he introduces thief a new character and a stranger and hireling and robber and wolf now let's uh, let's see what happens the thief comes by night or comes when you are asleep thief comes when you are not attentive thief you have various kinds of uh, thieveries in this world when people are looking at at some other place some other for example this is common in india at the, in the railway platform when you are waiting for the train they cause some destruction some disturbance so you turn your head in some direction and then your suitcase is gone if you are not holding on to it so they deliberately cause so when you are inattentive that is how they rob your goods the thief and robber the greek word implies the violence the violence not necessarily showing you a gun or a, at knife point the violence could be uh, some kind of spiritual blackmail the violent you would lose salvation if you don't obey me and this is my rule if you break that rule you would lose salvation this is also a kind of violence the violence could could be a softer violence or it it could be it could be very physical brutal violence through a sword or or a gun point or knife whatever the method is so these are two distinct ways the thief and robber and he he wants about thief more than the robber thief comes except to steal kill and destroy and what thief and robber would put their eyes on money money the primary definition of thief and robber their eyes are on your money so that is the first primary layer they are after your money those are thieves and robbers second thing is thieves and robbers always take not just currency notes but what are what is whatever the valuables you have so the very valuable essence of what you have they take away in this whole context of salvation your eternal life they take away they take away your crown that's why bible warns us watch let no man take your crown so it is possible that a thief and robber can take away your crown and which god the father and jesus christ would give you i will crown you with many crowns that is about jesus christ but under him people who are faithful to him and his father they were also given crowns crown is a metaphor for rulership for reigning and we have a stranger the stranger is all, almost all of them are clubbed under stranger the stranger is the promise salvation that is taking you to the father by following their rules they 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 simplify the whole gospel in terms of some do's and don'ts typically like six or seven half a dozen rules uh, which people can remember and they they deceive that by keeping those rules you would reach the father and and sometimes they don't state it but they imply and they don't tell you to come to here here is the your life and your salvation if they do that they stranger 
but if you are sheep under this shepherd you would recognize the stranger these are not just do's and don'ts it's a change of heart change of mind change of your thinking and your speaking and your acts and reacts the whole person has to be transformed and for that you are not given the whole knowledge in the beginning you sm- you are you are given a small portion of the truth and gospel and you are expected to learn and grow and bearing fruit and god will give you more of his truth more of this righteousness so it's a continual lifetime learning there are no no six dozen or half a dozen do's and don'ts this is much more than do's and don'ts it's 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 a spiritual movements inner spiritual movements your in your thoughts and somebody counted all jesus christ teachings how many commandments he gave uh, they counted some 600 it's impossible to re- remember all the 600 commandments and so we will stick to 10 commandments that does not work those are those are not 600 commandments that is a great mistake uh, people are doing those are not do's and don'ts he is defining an attitude he is defining the motion of sin in you or motion of righteousness which are in father so it's all inner movements and motions it's it's a, it's a matter of deep inside your heart mind and thought those things are very difficult to understand and difficult to change you need spirit and power of god and wisdom of god it's a completely different operation uh these are internal movements these are external commands like calvin it is a big fraud and he says once saved you are always saved and god selects some people for salvation rest he would uh send it into damnation that's a false theology this has nothing to do with your predestination predestination is there but not the way calvin explains so you have you have this stranger you have to come out you have to come out of do's and don'ts start learning here and the hireling hireling is discussed as the ownership now here there is a relationship between shepherd and sheep of ownership the shepherd owns the sheep even in middle east uh, each of the shepherd will 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 walk in the front and the whole sheep would follow him because he owns the sheep he knows his sheep and his sheep also know him so there is an ownership here the hireling does not have that owning relationship ownership that's why when the wolf comes and attacks the sheep he flees he runs away he doesn't care to protect the sheep but a good shepherd will care for the sheep he will fight against the wolf and he will take away the wolf and in the in the process if necessary he will lay down his life and save the sheep that is the approach and attitude of the shepherd versus a hireling hireling is disconnected hireling wants benefits from the sheep but he doesn't really care when a wolf comes now is he talking about wolf coming into our congregations uh, maybe if some wilderness wolf is not wolf we are talking about semians wolf is a false teacher false teacher comes and divides the flock and snatches the flock after himself and if he can't take the whole sheep after himself he will do some important work that is he scatters the sheep all the unity is gone he scatters the sheep sheep are scattered in different directions and some of the sheep he would he would knock them and may, maybe maybe he will he will resort to killing the sheep so that is the purpose of wolf peter explains this further that a grievous wolves would come after my departure bringing in damnable heresies 
and who would take away the sheep after themselves after themselves just like strangers not to the shepherd that great shepherd who will watch for the souls of the sheep so this is wolf and this is hireling this is stranger this is robber this is thief these are all same colors color coded these are all alternatives to the real thing the real person so here the real person is so important and only place where you where you find this real person is your bible the scriptures holy scriptures especially for gospels mark matthew <clears throat> luke and john so we are talking about john we are discussing and trying to study john to learn this person who will take us to the father and the church government is one evil that we have at least like with the cogs uh according to th- them they were given authority to govern the brethren that means they not only declare themselves shepherds of the sheep but they have authority from god to rule over them that is the danger that is the evil built into the system they use different scriptures but they always misquote the scriptures for their own advantage that means they are lying to the brethren the, about the authority they have which they actually do not have and uh, they use this verse isaiah 22 verses 21 to 22 this is a prophecy messianic prophecy uh, and i will clothe him that is jesus christ yeshua with thy robe and strengthen him with thy girdle and i will commit thy government that is government of god into his hand actually this can be translated the government of god on his shoulders and he shall be a father to the inhabitants of jerusalem and to the house of judah and the key of the house of david will lay upon his shoulder so this is understood that government of god is placed on the shoulder of god's son and he shall open and none shall shut so he is the door he shall open none shall shut and he shall shut none shall open so this is door opening or closing is done exclusively by son and because he was given that authority he was given the government of god and government of god rests on his shoulders and these people claim that somehow the government that rests on the shoulder of son of god was transferred to disciples and from disciples that came to these people now in our modern age that is an invisible words where he transferred the government from his shoulders to disciples or any other man that's a fiction probably they they are quoting from second delusions third chapter 45 verse i can easily prove that the government is still on the shoulders of son of god and he still has authority to shut or to open the door what these people claim is they now have the key of david and they can shut the door or open the door in revelation we see revelation is end of the book towards the end of the history he still has government on his shoulders is it it interesting let's see revelation 3 7 8 and to the angel of the church in philadelphia right these things said he that is holy that is only son of god and he is true he that has key of david still son of god has key of david and he that opens and no man shuts and shuts no man opens who is he the son of god who has key of david 
it is not transferred to the disciples and i know thy works behold i have a, i have set before thee an open door and no man can shut it so isn't it clear from this verse that yeshua jesus christ still has the government of god on his shoulder and it is he exclusively opens the door or shuts the door and what else he says no man opens if he shuts so he is eliminating every man and every woman other than himself and same thing when he shuts no man can open and when he opens no man can shut no man he is eliminating every man again in opposition to what these leaders claim that's that's a dangerous lie and dangerous stealing of the power that authority belongs only to god the father and his son they are stealing and they are lying under the name of god under the pretext of giving you salvation under the pretext of giving you rules so that you are loyal to them and not to necessarily to god and his son so they are a dead end i don't care whoever practices they have a big judgment hanging on them if you resort to lying all liars would be punished but if you lie under the name of god there would be greater punishment and <clears throat> here apostle peter in acts 4 he reemphasizes reassures be it known unto you all and to all the people of israel but by the name of jesus christ or yeshua of nazareth whom ye crucified whom god raised from the dead even by him does this man stand here before you referring to himself peter this is the stone which was set at not of you builders these builders are building the theology but they rejected the stone they set the stone at not which is yeshua jesus christ which is become the head of the corner and he goes on and says this profound statement neither is there salvation in any other any other person any other organization any other entity for there is none other name given under under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved there is only one name given that is yeshua jesus christ and the name is a metaphor for authority there is only one authority he is the authority his teachings and his example and his person are the authority by which men are to be saved and if you take away that by your lies you are in a dangerous place where the judgment falls on you and in fact god gives uh, uh god gives unlimited time for them to to weep to wail to have gnashing of teeth and a huge lamentation for lying revelation 22 13 15 these are the people who are outside the new jerusalem i am alpha and omega he is the beginning and he is the end beginner and finisher the first letter of the greek and last letter of greek language the beginning and the end the first and the last blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates of the city you have to do his commandments his teachings and he is the gate he is the door to new jerusalem so you would have to enter into the new jerusalem through the gates there are 12 gates uh into the city and then all 12 gates is a metaphoric representation of son of god and through him you would enter into the city because and you have right to the tree of life right to eat 
the tree of life. Tree of life is also a metaphor for New Jerusalem, which is also called our mother. So you, have, you can freely eat the tree of life. All these wonderful blessings are there, but, but outside for without, it's a old English, outside are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and this is important whosoever loves and makes a lie if you make a lie god gives unlimited time unlimited period for you to weep to cry to have gnashing of teeth and here is an important phrase whoever loves and makes a lie if somebody makes a lie if you follow them, you are also loving that lie. You are perpetuating a lie. If you follow a fraud, you are also fraud. You have to come here. If you are following truth, you are also truth. That's how ultimately things would be analyzed spiritually. If you follow truth, you would also be truth. If you follow a fraud, you are also fraud. You are not only per per perpetuating the fraudulent schemes of some men and women, but you are promoter of their lies. It's a dangerous thing, uh, not only for the person who manufactures the lie, but also who follows the lie. That's why God is asking you and me to come out of all these boxes, to come to his son, who will take us to the father, who is the truth, the truth. And... Every presumptuous leader, minister, pastor, teacher who draw men and women to themselves would bear this judgment. But on the other hand, like Moses, Paul, and Apostle John, Peter, everybody said we are merely men. We are merely vessels. We are merely small shepherds trying to help you to come to the great shepherd that great shepherd who will take us to the father. If you are doing that, you are safe. If you are drawing men and women to yourselves and putting them under your, under your heel and using draconian methods to put them under, under a false claim of government of God, the judgment would not go away on your head. That's what the whole scripture is shouting loud and clear. So that is lying and stealing your very precious life under the name of God. This is the worst thing any person can do. Let's uh, dive into chapter 10 and try to make sense out of it. Uh, this we have covered. I'm just reading it once. Uh, to set the stage, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that enters not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and robber. So thief and robber trying to propose a way other than Jesus Christ, other than Yeshua, other than son of God. If you are doing that, you are a thief and a robber. Thief is by stealth and robbery is by some violence. Some violence, any form and shape of violence, including blackmailing through lies. But he that enters in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the porter opens. God the Father opens the door to his son, only to his son, who is also called shepherd of the sheep. And the sheep hear his voice. If you are sheep of son of God, you must hear his voice, not to the voice of strangers. And he calls his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. So there is a personal relationship with the son of God. And when he puts forth or plucks you out of your comfort zone on one of the right hand boxes, his own sheep, when he plucks his own sheep, he goes before them and the sheep shall follow him, for they know his voice. If you are his sheep, you will follow him, not somebody X, Y, Z. And they know his voice. You must know his voice. 
this won't happen by accident this won't happen just like that in a minute this is a lifetime learning and lifetime dedication and devotion to his to study and learn and imitate him in every way so that you become more like your shepherd yeshua jesus christ and a stranger will they not follow so you must be able to come to a state growth that you should be able to recognize a stranger and flee from him for they know not the voice of strangers and this parable spoke jesus unto them but they understood not what things they were which he spoke unto them this is last uh, message and let's start from verse 7 then said jesus unto them again verily verily i say unto you i am the door of the sheep so he is the door of the sheep all that ever came before me before is the greek pra that implies other than him other than him coming by stealth coming under somebody else authority not the authority of father so all that ever came apart from me can be a, a, a another way to translate or thieves and robbers thieves and robbers he is repeating uh, from the previous slide but the sheep did not hear them so if you are sheep of yeshua jesus christ you should not hear the thieves and robbers any other theology any other philosophy any other teaching pattern and again he says again and again i am the door by me if any man enters in he shall be saved you would have salvation only in him that's what he is also saying and all the apostles are saying and let me read this once again so that we catch this phrase i am the door by me if any man enters in he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture what does it mean he is the door and we were told if you enter by this door you would go to the father but here he introduces an interesting phrase if anybody enters through through this door he will go in and out and find pasture what is going in and out do you go in to the father and again come out from that and again go in and again go out is that what he means definitely it is not once you enter you are safe in the kingdom of god you are safe in new jerusalem so it must mean something else in and out and in and out has something to do with finding pasture we discussed this last time after the presentation psalm 23 he leads us into green pastures make us lie down in the pastures which is also kingdom of god which is also new jerusalem where you find your rest and but you have to go in and out what is this so we will discuss this shortly after a couple of verses and here he comes and talks about this thief the what the thieves are the thief cometh not but or except the word greek word can be translated except the thief cometh not except to steal and to kill and to destroy so thieves have an agenda the thief what is precious for you they steal and take away and also they kill you it is not physically killing you it is spiritually killing you so that you lose out salvation and to destroy you all the wonderful beautiful future that you have all the hope and dream of being in new jerusalem where every tear would be wiped out from your eyes by father those aspirations are totally destroyed so the thieves are more dangerous than we think the false prophets and false leaders and false teachers false ministers and pastors are more dangerous than we ever thought the thief cometh not 
but to steal and to kill and to destroy. The thief is everybody which is not Jesus Christ, which are not bringing people to Jesus Christ, but somehow, somehow putting you on another path, another way. But I am come that they might have life. Remember Zoe? The Zoe is eternal life, consistently used in scriptures. So the Son of God has come that we, you and me, might have Zoe life and that they might have it more abundantly. This is surpassing without bounds. It is expanding and, and multiplying uh, life and joy and, and fulfillment that is possible only in New Jerusalem. There is abundance of joy and abundance of everything. While the people who went after the thieves and after the false teachers, they, have, they were given plenty of time, unlimited time outside New Jerusalem where they will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And I don't see any verse how long it would be. It, it looks to me it is unlimited time. Just like the people who are in New Jerusalem have unlimited time forever in the blissful joy in the presence of Father and His Son and innumerable angelic beings. I am the good shepherd and the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. So he has laid down his life for us. He is also called Lamb of God. And that's what the Passover, he shed his blood for you and me under the new covenant. Take, drink this cup, which is with wine. This wine symbolizes my blood, which is shed for many, including you who is taking and tasting this wine. Remem remember me who has shed the blood and remember the new covenant under which this blood is shed. We have to remember as we take the Passover symbols, we have to remember the shepherd and the lamb of God and the new covenant and his shed blood. But he that is a hireling who doesn't have this relationship with the sheep He's just a leader for pretense. He's just a leader to make some money. And he's just a leader to show some power, enjoy authority and power over the brethren through deceit. But he that is a hireling, not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, he doesn't own the sheep. He doesn't have any, any, any genuine feeling for the sheep. Sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf catches them and scatters the sheep. And the hireling flees because he is a hireling and cares not for the sheep. So the hireling is a dangerous person who pretends to be a shepherd, but he is hireling. He is a different makeup. He is a different internal signatures, not the signatures of the true shepherd. Now, True shepherd is there. Under him, there are right shepherds and wrong shepherds. The wrong shepherds are hirelings. And the right shepherds truly care for the sheep. They care not for your well-being uh, here and now on this earth. That is a short-term gain. But the true shepherds will always focus on your long-term benefits. Not now, but future. Not, not on this earth, but heaven. When what all God is saying finally unfolds, then the beauty of his promises will come to fruition. You see the new Jerusalem, the beautiful city, city of living God descending inside all the resurrected saints. And all outside are weeping and wailing. That picture comes. Not, nobody can stop that. That is inescapable, but the choice is ours. And we always thought the warnings and promises of God lightly. 
but it is time to take uh, time to be serious about his promises as well as his warnings don't be after a hireling go after a true shepherd who is answerable to the, to the ultimate shepherd and who will work the works of shepherd and who will direct you to the true shepherd not to that own person what is in and out in and out is a hebraism hebraic phrase uh, you can't go with a literal translation in and out you can't go in into the kingdom through this door and again come out and again go in if you do that you will you are gone you have to stay in new jerusalem you have to stay spiritually in the kingdom of god you can't be in the kingdom of god and again kingdom of devil you can't go like both so it cannot mean but there are significant statements and verses in the scripture that explains this i want to walk you through few scriptures that talks about this concept very fascinating uh, in and out numbers 27 verses 15 to 18 and moses spoke unto the lord saying let the lord the god of the spirits of all flesh it's an interesting phrase is god of spirits of all flesh spirits of men and women he is god of those spiritual components the new testament concepts are embedded in the old testament and uh, let this god set a man over the congregation here the moses is ending his ministry uh, that phase is over and somebody else has to take the children of israel forward into the promised land and a new leader is needed so set a man over the congregation here moses is uh pleading unto god perhaps praying and what is he asking set a man over the congregation and which in the old english that man may go out before them and which may go in before them what is that go out and in you have in go in and go out here at the top you have exact same expression go out and go in before them what does it mean here moses is asking set a man over the congregation of israel that he may go out and go in before them and here is the key which may lead them out and which may bring them in that the congregation of the lord be not as sheep that have no shepherd so here is the key if you are leading in and leading out or going in before them or going and going out before them it's a hebraic expression it's a metaphoric uh, way of saying shepherd the sheep shepherd so the sheep when their leader is going in or going out he is ruling them he is shepherding them he is helping them he is feeding them what a shepherd does what all the shepherd does for the sheep that's all embedded and enclosed in this expression of in and out going in going out leading in leading out so if some man god if god sets them so that he does all these things then the congregation of israel or congregation of lord shall not be without a shepherd but they have a shepherd so what does it mean if we come back here they shall go in and out that means they would have the shepherd permanently so when they are entering into the door by if any man by me if any man enter because he is the door i am the door by this door by me if any man enter he shall be saved so you enter you don't come out but when you enter something else happens and shall go in and out that means you are ruled by christ and you are under the shepherdship of christ so you go in and out and christ would go in and out to shepherd you and you find the pastor and you also go in and out 
and shepherd other people, bringing them to Christ, not to yourself. So it's a double application of this phrase. The sheep shall go in and out. Here, the Joshua would go in and out so that he would be a shepherd. And verse 18 tells us, And the Lord said unto Moses, Take thee Joshua, the son of Nun. Here God is saying, Joshua, a man in whom is the spirit, lay thine hand upon him. So Joshua would do this, go out and go in and lead them out and lead them in. So that's a, the, don't take these phrases literally. That's why I wanted to explore the Hebraism. Uh, and then you see that several times, like you have King Saul and David, who is declared king, but not yet king. He would, he is would be king. Now Saul, when he's uh, sick, David would come and play the harp so that the evil spirit which God sent to the over this over Saul, King Saul, that that spirit, evil spirit would leave Saul uh, when David plays the harp, and Saul would be refreshed. And once he is refreshed, is good, but he has that evil. Uh, Evil thoughts come in him, pumping from him, and suddenly he becomes envious and jealous of David, and he has this outbursts of uh, wrath. And in in one of those wraths, he he does this, and Saul casts the javelin or a spear. Uh, he throws that javelin, for he said, "I will smite David even to the wall with it," and David avoided out of his presence twice. So David has swift movement. He escapes uh, Saul. And Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him and was departed from Saul. This is a classic uh, example where Holy Spirit leaves a person that is King Saul and the Holy Spirit is given to another person that is David. David is a vessel that retained the spirit and Saul is a vessel that lost Holy Spirit. So he has terrors. Saul has terrors, but David was at peace because he has faith in God. He has spirit of God. And therefore Saul moved him, moved, removed him from him. He can't, he can't deal with David. So push him away, take him away, put him somewhere else. So he made him his captain over a thousand and uh, go and go and do over a thousand thousand troops and do your work away from me but what david did when he was given that assignment he went out and came in what is this he went out and came in same expression go in and go out in the past tense it is he went out and came in before the people so whatever that means and David behaved himself wisely in all his ways, and the Lord was with him. Wherefore, when Saul saw that he behaved himself very wisely, he was afraid of him. But all Israel, here we can see how this phrase is explained. But all Israel and Judah loved David because he went out and came in before them. He ruled them well. He shepherded them. He did, not, he did not rule them with an iron hand, with like, like uh, the false government of God, but he shepherded them just like Joshua shepherded the children of Israel going in and out. He also went in and out and his shepherding, his going in and out, people loved David. All Israel and Judah, both the houses, loved David because he went out and came in before them in a very well godly way. So that's what it means. See a few more verses. Second Samuel 5 verses 1 to 2. Then came all the tribes of Israel to David unto Hebron and spoke, saying, Behold, we are thy bone and thy flesh. Also in time past, when Saul, King Saul, was king over us, thou was he that led us and brought in Israel. And the Lord said to thee, 
thou shall feed my people who feeds shepherd would feed his sheep thou shall feed my people israel and thou shall be captain or shepherd over israel so these are in synonymous with leading out and bringing at bringing in so in and out in and out as an expression and deuteronomy 28 verse 6 to 7 blessed art thou blessed shall thou be when thou come in and blessed shall thou be when thou go out these are blessings and cursings chapter god says you are blessed when you rule other people if i am with you because you are in a state of blessing these set of verses gives their blessed state in right relationship with god and right standing with god so when when you come in and when you go out it will be a blessing thou shall be blessed the lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee against your rulership be smitten before thy face they shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways because your rulership is established your coming in and going out would be established your ruling and your shepherding would be established when you have right relationship with me your enemies would flee seven ways but on the other hand he repeats in the cursings chapter cursed shall be thou be when thou come in and cursed shall thou be when thou go out because you don't have right standing with god the lord shall cause thee to be spit, smitten before thine enemies thou shall go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them and shall be removed into all the kingdoms of earth so your ruling would be taken away coming in you have so many verses like uh, the da- david we already talked about uh i want to skip for the sake of time in and out you have so many verses in and out let's move forward verse 14 i am the good shepherd and know my sheep he knows my sheep and i am known of mine here a double knowing he knows his sheep and his sheep also knows him that is the double knowing relationship and as father knows me even so i know the father and i lay down my life for the sheep so here is the double knowing and double covenants uh, i just want to highlight this this thing there are always two covenants one is father and you have son there's a covenant between them in eternity past and then this is we we have a covenant this is one covenant between father and him and we have another covenant between us and christ now this covenant he explains i will say one covenant one and covenant two he always explains covenant two in terms of covenant one covenant one i know the father son knows the father and father also knows the son there's a shepherd sheep relationship between them in the same way you also know me and i will also know you these are like double covenants in 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 operation just as uh, i obey my father's commandments and abide in his law he asks us you obey my commandments and abide in my law he, he always refers to covenant 1 to explain to us covenant 2 in fact the covenant 1 and covenant 2 to together become new covenant so this is what he is doing here i am the good shepherd and know my sheep and i am known of mine 
as the father knows me even so know i the father and i lay down my life for the sheep and he goes on and and the other sheep i have which are not of this fold and them also i must bring in they shall hear my voice and they shall be there shall be one fold and one shepherd uh, there are lots of uh, old testament scriptures alludes to that fact and both houses would be bundled with one stick he takes two sticks brings them together and one stick one shepherd there are lots of verses uh, this knowing is always covenant for example adam genesis 4:1 adam knew eve and his his wife knew his wife and she conceived and bare cain and said i have gotten a man from the lord so this is a intimate loving relationship of marriage between adam and his wife and the begot offspring uh, cain in this case this intimate marital union uh, is paraphrased in a metaphorical way of knowing adam knew eve and what is marriage marriage is a covenant all through scriptures every covenant is a type of marriage and marriage is a special uh, instance of covenant and even under the old covenant god calls himself as husband and under the new covenant also christ calls him himself as husband and we are called wife or bride or new jerusalem so there is all through the covenant and marriage and knowing the new has something to do with covenant and then similarly cain knew his wife and she conceived and bare enoch so new is a marriage mar- marital covenant and and here he says about moses there arose not a prophet that is deuteronomy 34:10 since in israel like unto moses whom lord knew face to face moses has a face to face relationship with with god just like son has face to face relationship with the father that's what john 11 says here like because moses is a shadow is a type and shadow of yeshua jesus christ and then here is the definition uh, or the statement of new covenant god makes this is an important passage uh, all of us should be familiar with this jeremiah 31 verses 31 to 34 here god says prophesies about the new covenant that he will make yet in future behold the days come said the lord i will make a new covenant with the house of israel and with the house of juda not according to to the covenant that i made with their fathers in the day that i took them by hand to bring them out of the land of egypt not according to the sinai covenant not according to the old covenant but he will make a new covenant and which my covenant they break which my covenant is referring back to the old covenant that he that they broke although here is the language just notice that although i was a husband unto them said the lord they were under covenantal relationship uh, sinai covenant where god himself calls himself as husband see husband and wife is 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 a mysterious covenant and at that covenant has has both between god and his people as well as a man and his wife that is built in in several layers several levels so although i was a husband unto them said the lord but when you have a covenant relationship you know each other god knows his people the his people know him that will be evident here verse 33 this shall be the covenant that i will make with the house of israel after those days said the lord i will put my law in their inward parts 
This is internal spiritual transformation, inward parts, and write it in their hearts. This is what new covenant is all about. It is not following few do's and don'ts of the earthly leaders. This is heavenly thing, inward parts in their hearts, and will be their God, and they shall be my people, and they shall teach no more every man. his neighbor and every man his brother saying know the lord you don't teach know the lord they are already under covenantal relationship for they all shall know me because of the covenantal relationship from the least of them to the greatest of them said the lord for i will forgive their iniquity and will remember their sin no more the forgiveness of sins is only under new covenant that's how the precious blood of son of god and this was prophesied a long time ago and several centuries passed until yeshua jesus christ picks up this theme and offers the wine to his disciples he says this symbolically represents my precious blood shed for you shed for many to forgiveness of sins so their sins iniquities are forgiven and father does not remember their sins any longer because of his son and this is all made possible by the new covenant that's what jesus said not me and you have a knowing relationship you have knowing relationship hosea also says same thing about that in that day hosea 2 chapter 2 verses 18 to 21 in that in that day will i make a covenant for them with the beasts of the field with the fowls of the heaven with the creeping things of the ground and i will break the bow and sword and the battle out of the earth and will make them to lie down safely lie down in the pastures and i will betroth thee unto me forever what does this mean betroth thee unto me forever it's a marital language it's betrothal marriage engagement i will betroth thee unto me in righteousness in judgment and in loving kindnesses and in mercies i will even betroth thee unto me in faithfulness and here comes the key and thou shall know the lord all because of the covenant that he is making a covenant new covenant always has an association of knowing knowing has a connotation of covenants and it shall come to pass in that day i will hear said the lord i will hear the heavens and they shall hear the earth this is a great prophetic message and uh, that's what he is saying i am the good shepherd and know my sheep and i am also known of my own sheep as the father knows me even so know i the father so they have covenant relationship son knows the father father knows the son in the same way you also know me and i also know you that's all what he is saying he is taking us back to the covenant by this word no we have more scriptures and more and more scriptures finally if you are not in covenant relationship with him uh, then he would say then said one unto him lord are there few that be saved that is luke 13 verses 23 to 27 and he said unto them strive to enter at the straight gate that is talking referring to himself for many i say unto you will seek to enter in and shall not be able they are going into broad way they are broadening their way with some do's and don'ts they are not really entering by the straight gate when once the master of the house is risen up and has shut the door when the door is shut you begin to stand outside and to knock at this door saying lord lord open to us and he shall answer and so in say unto you i know you not whence ye are he doesn't know you here he says i know my sheep and my sheep know me so they are not his sheep 
and he shall begin to say they shall to begin to say we have eaten and drunk in thy in thy presence some bible students would interpret this as passover we ate and drank in thy presence and thou hast taught in our streets but he shall say i tell you i know you not know you not they don't have covenantal relationship when ye are depart from me all ye workers of iniquity which is lawlessness and nomia so the knowing is important having covenant relationship with son of god is important it's required you cannot have covenant relationship with martin luther or calvin you cannot go in that route i never knew you depart from me ye workers of iniquity same thing matthew 7 verses 21 to 23 so the knowing has connotations now we have one shepherd the true shepherd the good shepherd who lays down his life for us let us follow him it's an exclusive calling it is an exclusive shepherdship and again the kingdom of god kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls who when he has found one pearl of great price went and sold all that he has and bought it bought that you sell everything every other thing every other pursuit and prioritize to follow this shepherd he will take you to the father and that great shepherd and anybody who loves father or mother more than me that includes your pastor if you love your pastor more than son of god you are not worthy of son of god he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me and he that takes not his cross and follow after me you give up everything else that is cross every thief every robber and every stranger every hireling you give up and every false doctrine every do's and don'ts of men you give up take up your cross and follow after me if you are not doing that you are not worthy of me he that finds his suke shall lose it and he that loses his life or suke for my sake shall find it and if you try to have the earthly life and earthly glory and follow somebody else you would lose the life but if you lose for the sake of kingdom and son of god you shall find it he that receives you receives me that is about teachers and he that receives me receives him that sent me there's a there's a two chain link father has sent the son and son is sending his teachers and his teachers if if their teaching is true and received by people then people are receiving the teacher plus who sent that teacher that is son of god plus the father who sent son of god it is it's a chain that works that's what he is saying and finally the hebrews that great shepherd now the god of peace that brought again from the dead our lord jesus christ that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant you cannot take away new covenant uh, from jesus christ and his uh, calling and his blood make you perfect in every good work to do his will working in you in your hearts and minds that which is well pleasing in his sight through jesus christ to whom be glory forever and ever amen let us follow that great shepherd not fake ones he will take us to the father i will leave this here and uh, give the control back to don for further discussions Okay. Um it is time we take uh, questions. Andrew. I was just uh very curious about the uh you know 
the, the, the notion of we go through Christ to the Father, and of course we do. But at the same time, I'm wondering how that fits in with uh, the numerous scriptures where uh, we are told that, if, if, as in John, where if we keep his commandments, we will come and make our dwelling with him. In other words, the Father and the Son both dwell in us as his temple. Uh, that theme is reiterated in a number of places uh, where it is the Father and the Son. You know, uh, Christ said, uh, I live in the Father and the Father lives in me, and I live in you and you live in me. And I often wondered, well, does that include the Father? But the number of scriptures on it seem to uh, say, yeah, that uh, he does live in us. So I'm just wondering how it fits in with uh, the two covenants where is one from father to son and one from son to us. So if that could be explained a little more detail that way, I'd like to know. I can quickly put a diagram. Uh, we have been discussing this over several weeks, uh, probably for the benefit of everybody, uh, else, this is my position. Uh, so there is a micro layer and macro layer. So the micro layer is you are the temple of Holy Ghost, right? Holy Spirit. So you are a person here. So this person is a physical person as well as a spiritual person. You have a heart and mind, you have spiritual components. So in this spiritual components, Christ will come here. This is uh, Christ will come into you through when the, this is again called uh, baptism of Christ or baptism by Holy Spirit or circumcision of heart. There are several phrases. Christ comes and begins to rule and change and convert you. When he comes, his father also comes to you. So you have father and son, and both will come and dwell in you. This is micro layer. Okay. This is during your transition. Your transition from a child of devil to child of God. Okay. Now, once all this is happened over, whether the time of resurrection or time of your death happens, then there will be resurrection. And then you are resurrected and you are resurrected into another reality, which is called macro. Macro is New Jerusalem. So you would be transported to the presence of father and son where they have both, the, both have their own thrones and innumerable angels and festive gathering and church of the firstborn. That is New Jerusalem, according to Hebrews. So that is the ultimate reality is macro and current reality is micro. So those are micro and macro concepts, and uh, one does not negate the other. That's my take. If somebody else has uh, another understanding, I would like to know. Or any other further question, uh, Andrew? Does that help or? I, uh, I don't, don't really get the connection. Uh, but I'm just going to bide my time and think it through and ask God to show me more clearly as we go through time. But maybe uh, like, like micro and macro, uh, just it's okay. I, I got it. I understand analogies and metaphors help a lot. But uh, I, I'm still working on the puzzles, okay? Sure, sure. Thank you uh, for honesty. Maybe Alan can help. Like, I don't know. Alan? 
Oh, I was I was going to ask uh, Andrew to to state his question in a little more simplistic way. If you could uh, just restate your question one more time. My question was: Given that both father and son dwell in us, uh, how do we go through the lineage of one covenant between the father and the son, and then a covenant between the son and us? And uh, it seems to exclude all three of us at once, in other words, the father and son dwelling in each and every one of us as an individual. So I wish I could say it uh, more succinctly, but uh, I just don't understand the correspondence between the two linear covenants and the uh, presence of the father and son in us mm -hmm. simultaneously. Sorry. Well, I don't think that the, the fact that they both dwell in us and, uh, and us in them which is found in, uh, I think, 1 John chapter 4. Uh, I don't think that that has anything to do with uh, the lineage of covenants. It has to do with the, with the indwelling and, and their presence in the new temple. But uh, as far as the covenants go, um, there were people in the beginning who have the spirit of God in them. And there are people at the end of the age that do also. I'm trying to understand your question. I guess I'm not getting it. Well, I, I will uh, at least point you to one thing here um, that we come to the father through the son. And I don't know if that has anything to do with your question. Very uh, much. Okay. Very let's go over to um, Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 19. Uh, do you want me to pull it up or do you want to? You can pull it up. And uh, we're going to be in uh, 19 here, which has, has to do with approaching the Father, uh, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest, which no one could do in the past, of course, because only the high priest could do that until the veil was rent. But now we have boldness, or the word should probably be translated uh, confidence. We have the confidence to enter the holiest place of all. And this is figurative language for the temple of which you are. Uh, we do it only, it says here, by the blood of Jesus. And it's a new and living way, which he established and, and consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. So uh, our ability to come to the Father is only through the Son, as Tagore was able to, uh, to go over that material. And this supports exactly what he said. We uh, enter the holiest only by this new and living way through the blood of Christ. So yes, we can come directly to the Father now, where uh, that's only a part of a new and living way, a process that was not formerly uh, available to people. And I don't know if that has anything to do with your question at all. It's helpful. Uh, I, I already knew this. I mean, it's not that I didn't, uh, but it's, it's very helpful to focus in on that. And, you know, there are processes that uh, take place and we can't confuse the processes. Uh, you know, just like a piece of uh, uh, assembly line in the factory, if you get your processes confused, it doesn't come out right. Sure. And one, one, one of the things about coming through Christ does not negate what uh, was being taught tonight in terms of uh, the lineage from father to son and us to uh, Christ to us. So I, I'm not saying that they are... Uh, in any way wrong, I'm just saying that maybe they're just independence and just different aspects of the same thing. So anyway. So I, would you I, see your question, is your question more of a technical question or more of a, a question of faith? Uh, I have been coming more and more and more to just prayer. And, and I've had more prayer answered right now than I have in my life. I've had a dramatic healing. 
a lot of really good things are happening. I'm also getting opposition things that I have to pray about a lot. Um, but uh, yeah, the, 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 the reality of what does it really mean for the Father to be actually inside me? I mean, he has his spirit. Christ has his spirit. And uh, there's the Holy Spirit. And I've had to reconcile that, and I think I have. But, you know, these things, I'm just coming to the everyday reality of it, not just what the scriptures say, but the translation into the, you know, action of my relationship with, with, with God. Yeah, well, we do see it through a glass darkly. And if you want absolute clarity on those things, uh, I hate to tell you, you might go to your grave without absolute clarity. <laughs> But the fact that you're uh, that you're trying to grasp and, and get a hold of things that most people throughout history never have, uh, never were, even men and women of God have not had absolute clarity. So you're not alone, Andrew. <laughs> you're not alone. It's an absolutely amazing thing that we have direct access to, to the Father. I mean, this was Christ's sacrifice. This was Christ's mission. And, and, and there we have the wisest and most powerful being that's ever been, and, and, and another being who gave up his eternal life to become a mortal and be God in the flesh, and then return to God. And, you know, what a huge sacrifice. Eh? You know, Passover is coming, and it's kind of unbelievable. I'm a little mesmerized right now. Rightfully so. We all ought to be. And that's why uh, I think our Father is, is greatly pleased when we tremble at his word, because the things that are in it are, are beyond our grasp. And yet he does reveal much to us. So there is a verse in Deuteronomy that says that uh, uh, the secret things belong to the Lord, but the things that are revealed he has given to us. And he has not revealed everything at this time. We just have to live with it. I mean, that's the, the fact is, I got to live with that. And we, we, uh, we continue to ponder and continue to, uh, to reach beyond our grasp. And that's good. But um, he just hasn't revealed it all at this time. I wish I could help you more with it, but I think uh, I'll let someone else chime in. 